today up to 4.5% then hold says the Bank of Canada. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, that is post covering finance and prop news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the Bank of Canada was one of the more aggressive central banks in raising rates, and they raised interest rates for an eighth consecutive and potentially final time, saying it expects to move to the sidelines now and to assess the impact of its rapid tightening on the economy. Policymakers led by Governor Tiff Macklem increased the benchmark overnight lending rate by 25 basis points to 4.5% overnight on Wednesday. That's the highest level in 15 years. Bonds rallied and the loonie dropped sharply. While the quarter percentage point hike matched expectations of markets and economists, most analysts didn't see the central bank explicitly declaring a potential end point to rate increases. Our policy decision today has two elements. First, we raised our policy interest rate by 25 basis points to 4.5%, and we are continuing quantitative tightening. Second, if economic developments evolve broadly in line with the forecast we published today, we expect to hold the policy rate at its current level while we assess the impact of the cumulative 425 basis point increase in our policy rate. We've raised rates rapidly, and now it's time to pause and assess whether monetary policy is sufficiently restrictive to bring inflation back to the 2% target. At our last two policy decisions, the Governing Council said we would be assessing how tighter monetary policy is working to slow demand, how supply chains are evolving, and how inflation and inflation, inflation expectations are responding. These assessments, together with our revised forecast, were important inputs into our policy decision. Recent data suggests that the restrictive stance of monetary policy is dampening household spending, particularly on housing and big ticket items. But economic growth and employment in the second half of 2022 were stronger than we expected. And so excess demand in the economy has persisted, putting continued upward pressure on prices. Simply put, our overheated economy is not as cool as not cooling has not cooled as much as we expected. Global supply chains, on the other hand, are resolving more quickly than expected. And while we're not back to normal yet in Canada, we have seen substantial progress. CPI inflation declined to 6.3% in December, reflecting lower energy prices and some moderation in the prices for durable goods as supply improved and demand softened. Lower gasoline prices are welcome, but prices of essentials like groceries and rent continue to increase too quickly. Measures of core inflation have also been stuck at about 5%. With three months rates below year-over-year -year increases, core inflation will likely start to come down in the months ahead. Still, core inflation needs to continue to decline for total CPI inflation to get back to the 2% target. Regarding expected inflation, our surveys indicate that fewer households and businesses think inflation will stay high for a long time, but short-term inflation expectations remain elevated and are above our own inflation forecast. Based on these assessments, the Governing Council concluded that a further modest increase in the policy rate is appropriate. The bank's ongoing program of quantitative tightening is complementing this restrictive stance. Looking ahead, we know it takes time for higher interest rates to work through the economy to slow demand and reduce inflation. And given the speed and magnitude of the interest rate increases over the last year, their full effect is still to come. We can also see that the interest rate increases we've undertaken to date are already working. Higher interest rates are slowing household spending and inflation is coming down. With today's modest increase, we expect to pause rate hikes while we assess the impacts of the substantial monetary policy tightening already undertaken. To be clear, this is a conditional pause. It's conditional on economic developments involving, evolving broadly in line with our NPR outlook. 
If we need to do more to get inflation to the 2% target, we will. We're trying to balance the risks of under and over tightening. If we do too little, the decline inflation will stall before we get back to target. If we do too much, we will make the adjustment unnecessarily painful and undershoot our inflation target. Canadian government bond yields and the currency fell as investors suggested the central bank's indication that it will hold rates steady. The only dropped as low as 1.3428 per US dollar after the decision before pairing those losses and the yield on Canadian two-year bonds dropped to 3.57%, down about eight basis points on the day. And two-year US Treasury yields briefly dipped a couple of basis points after the news. Inflation is now forecast to slow to 3% by the middle of the year and to return to the 2% target in 2024, they said. An official said falling three-month core measures of inflation may be a signal that underlying price pressures have peaked. In the quarterly monetary policy report published alongside the decision, officials said the economy is still overheating, but growth is expected to deaccelerate rapidly and higher rates are weighing on the real estate market and on household spending, and that'll help to cool growth and inflation. If economic developments evolve broadly in line with the NPR outlook, Governing Council expects to hold the policy rate at its current level, the bank said in the rate statement. Still, policymakers cautioned that more hikes may be needed if economic data surprises to the upside. The bank is prepared to increase the policy rate further if needed to return inflation to the 2% target. Swaps trading suggests that markets expect the bank's next move to be a rate cut, potentially as early as October. Now, asked about the possibility of a rate decrease this year during a press conference, Macklem said it's still far too early to be talking about cuts. Um, during, in your forecast uh, for inflation today, you say um, you forecast that it'll be declining to 3% by mid-year and then 2% next year. Since 3% is sort of the upper band of your target, does that mean when once you get to three percent, you can start considering uh, cutting, or or and you know money markets are pricing in a cut by October? Um, well, look, you know today we've announced that we're raising, and we think it's time for a pause. Uh, but let, let's keep in mind that inflation is still over six percent, uh, and um, yes, uh, you know we. We are certainly seeing clear evidence, and that has reinforced our, our confidence that inflation is coming down. But uh, look, we do we do have to be humble. There are there are, there are uh, a number of risks out there, uh, which we've outlined in the monetary policy report. Um, so it, it's really far too early to be talking about cuts. Uh, you know, the, the the pause really is designed to give us time to assess whether we've raised interest rates enough to get inflation all the way back to target. And, and I would also just emphasize that uh, the one to three percent band is, is not a zone of indifference. It's designed to give a sense of you know, where Canadians can normally expect fluctuations in inflation. And if you want to be within the one to three percent band most of the time, you need to aim for the middle of the band. So our objective is to bring inflation all the way back to two percent. And Caroline Rogers, the bank's senior deputy governor, said the bank would need to see accumulated evidence that economic momentum and price pressures have turned for policymakers before boosting rates again. The conditional pause, that's the first among the group of seven central banks, suggests officials are convinced the current policy rate is restrictive enough to restore price stability. And in his opening statement at the press conference, Macklem acknowledged that the full impact of his hikes so far are still to come, given their speed and magnitude. The overnight rate has gone from 0.25% to 4.5% in less than a year. We're trying to balance the risks of over and under tightening, Macklem said. If we do too little, the decline in inflation will stall before we get back to target. If we do too much, we will make the adjustment unnecessarily painful and undershoot the inflation target. Andrew Grantham, an economist at Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, 
said that the Bank of Canada provided some unexpected guidance and he predicted that this will be the last increase. In their report, officials raised their estimates for economic growth in 2022 to 3.6% and forecast a 1% expansion this year, up from 3.3 and 0.9 in their October projections. And they said the chances of two consecutive quarters of negative growth, a so-called technical recession, are roughly the same as a small expansion in 2023. In Canada, the economy remains overheated and clearly in excess demand. Tight labour markets have shown only modest signs of easing. Job vacancies have come down a little, but remain elevated. The unemployment rate is near historic lows, and many businesses continue to report labour shortages. But as I said, higher interest rates are working to help the economy rebalance. Household spending has moderated. Demand for furniture and appliances has decreased, and housing market activity and prices have declined substantially. As pent-up demand diminishes, spending on services should ease. Higher interest rates are also expected to continue to slow business investment, and weaker foreign demand will weigh on exports. Putting this together, we expect growth in Canada to stall through the middle of this year before picking up later in the year. We project that on an annual average basis, growth in Canada's GDP will slow from about 3.5% in 2022 to about 1% in 2023 and 2% in 2024. Lower energy prices improve, improve global supply chains and slowing demand should bring inflation down significantly this year. We expect CPI inflation to fall to around 3% in the middle of this year and reach the 2% target in 2024. Needless to say, there are risks around this projection. The biggest near-term risk is that global energy prices could increase, pushing inflation up globally. We're also concerned that if inflation expectations remain elevated in Canada or increases in labour costs persist, inflation will not come down as quickly as we forecast. Overall, we view the risks around our inflation forecast as balanced, but with inflation still well above our target, we continue to be more concerned about the upside risks. And if these upside risks materialize, we are prepared to raise interest rates further. The Bank of Canada, which led its global peers in raising rates rapidly last year, could now be laying out a blueprint for how they pivot to pausing. Global economic outlook is improving because of Europe's resilience during an energy crisis, China's reopening, declining commodity prices and easing supply challenges. In Canada, it's a mixed picture. The labour market continues to add jobs at the end of last year. On the other hand, highly indebted households are feeling the pinch of higher rates and rising costs of shelter and food. And there's a risk that inflation in services will remain high if businesses continue to have trouble finding the workers they need. For the first time in its history, the Bank of Canada will give the public a glimpse of its rate-setting processes as well, joining central banks such as the US Federal Reserve and the Bank of England in sharing records of their meetings. A minutes-like summary of the bank's deliberations will be published on February 8th. Two weeks from now, on February 8th, we will publish for the first time a more detailed summary of Governing Council's deliberations. This summary will provide more insight into our decision-making, so I can be briefer today. And there's another interesting change too, in that the Bank of Canada will soon be allowed to retain some of its earnings to offset financial losses, which could persist for years as the central bank raises rates and reverses its early pandemic emergency programmes. The government plans to amend legislation to allow on a temporary basis the Bank of Canada to retain earnings rather than remit them to the government for the purpose of covering losses begin, uh, Kevin, by underlining that um, you know, we're here to discuss monetary policy and uh, the bank's losses have no impact on our, our monetary policy decisions. Um, but, but since you've asked and since our, our losses are certainly uh, generating some understandable questions, I, let, me, let me say a few, thing, a few things. The first thing I want to underline is that our losses are temporary. 
Normally, the Bank of Canada uh, makes uh, net positive net earnings, and that's because we earn interest on our uh, assets, uh, and we don't pay interest. Our main liability is currency, our banknotes in circulation, and we don't pay interest on that. Um, through the first parts of the pandemic, through 2020, 2020, 2021, uh, with QE, we expanded our balance sheet considerably. Uh, we had more assets that created more uh, net income, and we remitted that to the government. More recently, with the increases in interest rates, as you, as you mentioned, um, the interest we're paying on the settlement balances, uh, that interest rate is now higher than the interest we're getting on our assets. And so our net interest uh, income has turned negative. And uh, you know, we report our financial statements regularly. And as you saw in our Q3 financial statements, uh, that has resulted in our net income turning negative for the first time. Um, we will have a period of a couple years of an likely a likely a period of a couple years of negative net income before um, our income <laughs> reverts back uh, to its normal positive state. And as you indicated, um, or I think as you're aware, in our current legislation, the Bank of Canada does not have the ability to um, offset losses with uh, retained earnings. We, re we remit all our retained earnings to the government. Um, second point is, I'd underline, is that the Bank of Canada is not alone in this problem. Um, other central banks that are engaged in QE are also uh, experiencing or will be experiencing losses, and there are various solutions. And as you mentioned, um, the Bank of Canada and the Department of Finance have been discussing um, what would be the best solution uh, in the Canadian context. Uh, and I can tell you that the Minister of Finance has recently communicated to me that the government intends to introduce legislative amendments that will allow the bank to retain earnings to offset losses. So what this means is it will allow on a temporary basis the Bank of Canada to retain earnings rather than remit them to the government uh, for, the purposes, for the purpose of covering losses. Once positive equity is restored, we would resume our normal remittances to the government of Canada. Uh, this will, uh, this will, uh, uh, I mean, what I would say is this is a good solution. It'll allow us to to manage our equity, uh, and it'll give us it'll give us all the tools we need. Um, the final part, though, is I do want to go back to where I started. I want to reiterate that uh, none of this uh, has any impact on monetary policy. We don't run monetary policy with a profit motive in mind. Uh, monetary policy, uh, all our policy decisions are guided by our price stability and our financial stability mandates. The Bank of Canada in 2020 joined other central banks in starting a range of bond purchase programs to shore up financial markets as the pandemic prompted investors to dump assets. As inflation picked up in the following years, monetary policy authorities reversed some of those measures and raised interest rates. For the Bank of Canada, the about face means it's now paying more on settlement balances than it's receiving on its assets. In fact, the Bank of Canada posted a comprehensive loss of 522 million Canadian dollars in the three months ended September the 30th, compared with income of 697 million Canadian dollars a year earlier, according to its latest quarterly results. Of course, it also does raise the question as to can central bank make losses and who picks them up ultimately? So it will be interesting to see how that plays out. Of course, other central banks around the world are precisely in the same situation. So it'll be interesting to see how they deal with the same issue ahead. But the bottom line with regard to Canada is they have drawn a bit of a line in the sand at 4.5%. It's worth bearing in mind, of course, that the Fed is probably going to end up somewhere close to that as well. And of course, in Australia, the RBA is still well below that benchmark, which begs the question whether they will actually raise rates in February. I think that's almost certain and perhaps even later in the year, because the inflation outlook here is probably less optimistic than the Canadian one. But I do think it's important to understand that it can take a year to 18 months for the implications of higher rates to hit the real economy. And to that extent, watching and seeing what happens does make some sense. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.